Lhasa, that was just a delight. And, you know, there's so much humor in there and, and so much imagination and colors and all kinds of stuff all mixed together. Now, I'm sure there are a few things that you know better than to do, but I just have to point them out anyways. One of them is this double bass part here, which is written at pitch. That shouldn't happen in, you know, in orchestrated scores, whether it's concert, film, uh, crossover, whatever, the double bass part should be written an octave higher than sounding, right? So this whole line here is way out of range. I, I don't know of any contrabass or any double bass that could go all the way down here to uh, low F sharp. It yeah, just it it doesn't really exist in the the you know as the double bass as we know it. So this is all intended to be an octave higher. The other thing too is unsystematic measure lines. Okay, so the bar lines. These should all you know you should be grouping the uh, the measure lines together, the bar lines together according to the brackets at the left hand side of the page, right? So this should all be one bar line. There should the bar line should only go across the same staves that are covered by the brace here. There should be a single one for the timpani. There should be a multiple bar line crossing uh, all of these staves and so on and then the same thing for the winds. Okay, so just you know a couple of things a little strange right in there. Okay, <laughs> so let's I, I will just mention really quickly that that um, that many of these entries have reinterpreted harmony and sometimes it may be a case where the uh, the person who is working on the orchestration has like not quite understood the original source material and um, maybe got a chord or two wrong but in cases like this uh, it's really great to hear somebody playing around with the harmony and coming up with their own ideas about how to support the melody, how to harmonize from beneath, and it just really gets radical here at the end. Okay, um, yeah, now here you don't really have to say unmeasured tremolo, and in fact you could have reinterpreted this trill here uh, slightly differently. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to cover some of these things as we... Um, I, I mean, I understand why you're writing that, it's because the tempo is so slow. But I think this could have been written rather as a trill. But I'll I'll talk to that one. I'll talk about that when I get there. Hopefully, it re I'll remember to do that. Okay. And it's cool that you wrote in the the tuning for the harp. That um, this should be down right here in the middle, like in between the two staves. You can you can see how this can really confuse you if the if the bar line crosses higher than it should, right? Okay, um, so let's just focus here on the orchestration and I'll do, you know, I'll, I'll say what I can to help out. But I, you know, I just feel that it's almost like, like this, this entry is, I, I don't want to say like a joke or anything like that. Um, it's not, it's very serious, uh, but it's almost like a, um, like a cosmic jest if you, I hope you don't mind me saying that. You know, it's like a, you know, it's like a, a work of resynthesis on a grand scale that it, you know is a sort of a, a the expression of a very powerful imagination. Okay, so that is kind of the way that I want to put that. Okay, so we're starting off here. Um, now, don't say a ah, one. Okay, just say one period. All right. You, if you intend for the first player to be playing, don't say ah one. All right. Now I think I've talked about this before, because in the last group of entries, perhaps you didn't see the other ones where I commented about this. But ah one doesn't tell me anything. Uh, it means ah one means with 
with you know um, with one player. But which player is that? Is it the first player? Is it the second player? Just tell me which one. One period or two period, right? Just tell me that. Don't write a one. A due, a two. That is a real thing. That means two players are playing one thing, right? So you've got that here, right? But but and here, like here, we got one and three, right? Just put do that over here, right? Don't say a one. Thank you. Okay. Now let's uh, get back to the orchestration, not just the notation. So we've got the melody being played here with uh, first bassoon and cellos. That's a nice combination. And then we've got this um, this kind of upper pedal tone here, these uh, really high Bs, um, just kind of ringing out, singing way, way, way higher. So this is going to be uh, B6, right? So uh, B two octaves above the staff. And um, yeah, so the and the, the rest of the accompaniment is really, really simple. You know, just a little bit of soft trombone coming in there and these kind of very, very delicate surging in and out, like just really simple bits of harmony. All right, so da 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 da. Okay, the only thing that I miss is that there really is no, like there's no falling note. Da da da. There's no note that finishes up the phrase. Da 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 bum, right? There's there's no low note. Um then we just have the da da dee 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 right, which is is sort of being spread out amongst different players, right? Um this is it's kind of strange, it's like a score in C, but then you've got the the bass clarinet in B flat being interpreted at pitch but in C flat right so it's kind of a strange way of thinking about it you know and then you get your four horns in F in the key signature of F all right so um, you know maybe better just to give me a standard transposed score right with with the notes at their transposed pitches because I can read that really really well right it's just it's no mystery to me okay um, so we're all climbing up, and what's really cool here is that you start so low that it, you know, it really it doesn't become this big crisis when we get to the high point. You don't have to throw in piccolo or anything like that in order to fulfill the destination, right? And it's such a mellow, laid back. <laughs> it's such a a laid back kind of um, push here. That that it you know it doesn't really force us to um, to add too much right uh, so so that is nice as well okay um, now I would say three on a note is is pretty excessive like if mezzo forte it's really going to be ringing by the time you get up to this C sharp here it's going to be overpowering it's going to be much stronger than your playback is telling you okay then here like really low note down there with that you know just just going all the way down to that low e i mean it's possible on bass trombone but it's not a very nice note same thing for this low f sharp down here right that is possible but it's just a stinker of a note i mean i you know i mean it it just it's it is like at mezzo forte it is going to be kind of uh blatting and and um coarse same thing with this e it would be better if these were an octave higher in fact if certain things were entirely an octave higher because like you've got so much weight on this low end it doesn't matter that you mark it soft and then you have a crescendo to only mezzo forte it's a massive low end here, and you've got no support, practically no support at all for your poor cellos, right? You're just really weighting everything down on this double bass line, right? So you're giving that, giving it all to them. So the tuba is doubling that, the bass trombone is doubling that, the the and the contrabassoon. Okay, contrabassoon, same rules as the double bass, right? So the double bass and the contrabassoon are both going to be scored an octave higher than written. Right, so this, uh, you know, 
the if a contrabassoonist tried to play this, these this maybe the sub contrabassoon would be able to play this an octave lower. But the standard contrabassoon would want to read these notes an octave higher than you've scored them here, right? Okay. All right. So, um, but there's so much room here for some kind of support on the cello line, right? So you've got the only octaves going on here in in the um, you know, the, the only octave above the contrabasses is the cellos, and they've got no support from anybody. It would be much, much better to have the tuba and the bass trombone play octaves together. And then maybe the contrabassoon could actually play at the same octave as the cellos, right? Or you could um, maybe uh, the top line of these bassoons could be given to the English horn, and then the bottom line of the bassoons could be the firsts, and then the second bassoon could be doubling the cellos as well, right? And that way you get a really nice blend that isn't so bottom heavy. Right now this is just really scraping the basement, and especially with the bass trombone playing way, way down there. I mean, it's possible for, you know, but it's just, uh, you know, it. I mean, I, I don't like to take my bass trombone below F sharp. Right, that that's the lowest note I would want to give them, and I generally don't even ever go below A, anyways, just because it just gets not, you know, it's like we're getting into contrabass trombone area, where that would be a better thing to do, or just give it to the tuba for goodness sakes, right? Okay, so that's my thoughts about that, and then you know here we've got uh, horns. The horns are kind of nice. I like everything else that the that the brass are doing right in here. And it's just very, very cool. Um, you know, once again, that reinterpretation of the harmony. Okay, and then we get to here, uh, non vibrato. <clears throat> okay, and you, you're giving it to the English horn, okay? And everything is, everything is backed off well and good, but you know what? You need to be softer from right here, right? You've got mezzo forte, diminuendo these pitches right here in the horns and these in the bassoons are going to be and you know and even right here with the clarinets these are going to be distractingly loud while your english horn is starting right in here okay um and i would not put a staccato in the middle of a um in the middle of a slur mark like this you know like you've got you're mixing together a slur and then staccato marks, right? Mezzo staccato is a specific thing. So like, you know, you're kind of wanting, uh, 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 mm. it would be better just to mark this, you know, as separately articulated. Because mm, uh, uh, mm. that's generally kind of what you're going to get anyway, right? Because you've got an accent anyways at the peak right here, right? And so you want to slur into an accent, right? So think about all these things. Um, do you really want to, you know, here you've got a sort of an, a, a staccato slur into a longer note. So I would just say, get rid of the slur mark, right? So staccato, right, da, 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 then bump, ba, ba, da, da, da. And, and this is all kind of fine. And then bum, 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 bum. Now, um, like I've mentioned to quite a few people before, the melody note here is a repetition of the D sharp. Right? And then the F sharp above was actually a harmony note. Right? The actual melody here is da 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 da. Right? Where's that? Ba da 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 da. Where's my D sharp, C sharp? Right? So you can't just, you know, I mean, Lily makes it actually pretty clear. If you look at the piano part, she writes the F sharp above um, as, a, as a separate voice, right? But you can see the continuity of the melody that goes through the middle, right? Okay, it's not a it's not a horrible mistake, but it's one that a lot of people made and kind of took away. Like we we end up losing that that central voice, which is something, you know, with Lily, you really have to respect her. You know, even just a little bit of counterpoint that she throws in there. Granted that you are throwing in your own counterpoint, and that's really really cool. But yeah, uh, and I like the way that this leads to this. You know, the bum 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 bum. That's that's kind of cool. So you've got. Uh, non vibrato. Now you got ordinario. 
you don't need to have reverse stem directions here. These should just the stems should just go down right in here. So you've got staccato bum 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 bum, and that is really cool. And then okay, now here you do not need to write unmeasured tremolo because the tempo that you're going at 95 beats per minute. This will come off as just an unmeasured tremolo with a triple beam. Okay. Okay, and then here, yeah, I mean, I could see if you're going down to 45, which is really slow. Um, you, yeah, you might want to mark that it's unmeasured tremolo, but anyhow. So, um, but all the same, the scoring is kind of fun here. Dun 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 dun. Just a little bit of pizzicato there in the in the um, cellos little bit of a central voice there in the in the clarinets yeah and I, I like the way that it ends with it like you know you've got this harmony dun dun dun, dun. harmony nice warm harmony from the brass that's really cool then backing off again see it's the same thing like there's no contrast here of dynamic articulation or scoring uh, on a different section right it's just really you're just really kind of keeping it very controlled to these group this group of instruments but see it doesn't matter because I see what you're doing here is you're just blowing up to this complete reinterpretation this grand scoring of of the rest of that phrase okay and <clears throat> to sort of to look this over I would say if there's anything that's kind of you know that really kind of needs a little bit of work that is well, I mean, there's a few things here. One is that you have your violins higher than your, 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 sorry, your second violins are higher than your first violins, which is, there's kind of no justification for it. There's like nothing in the scoring that particularly requires that one be, la one be higher than the other. You know, the only thing that you've got right here is that the, that the D sharp ends up lower and the C sharp down here lower than this F sharp, but that's no need. That is not any need, therefore, for the most crucial part of the phrase, the, the strongest place right in here, for the um, the seconds to be uh, lower than the first. So the first really do need to lead right here and, and you're making it hard for them, right? So just, you know, it's whatever we end up getting, right? Um, and in that case, I really feel that it would be a simple thing to have this first violin line be an octave higher, right? The other thing too is that the higher pitches here, like the higher note of the of the second violins being A rather than the melody note of F sharp, right? The top of the chord. It also sort of diminishes our sense of motion in here. Like this was so reinterpreted in terms of harmony, it was very, very cool. But we ended up kind of losing the sense of what you know where was the actual melody note right so like we're not really even seeing it anywhere except for like here in the firsts and then we got some you know we got this octave going on here in the horns um and maybe a couple of other places but there's just no strong sense of that upper motion now of course you may have intended to just take that out of there, and that's fine too, all right? I, I appreciate that. But the end result here is that with these climbing uh, trumpets right in here, these loud trombones, this blaring horns right in here, this savage bass line in here with the, uh, with the bass trombone and tuba, that, you know, pretty much the strings are almost completely useless here like they're I mean you'll hear a little bit of their tremolo in the background but they really are not going to be very prominent now if they were pitched largely higher you know from the violas up and they were supporting some of what was going on in the strings you would get more of that color of that tremolo color but it's just so easy to bury strings when you have brass just going for it being really really loud okay and yeah, I mean, I mean, it's such a cool score. I don't want to. I want don't want you to think that I am kind of picking a, it apart and being dismissive of anything. But you know, I mean, if you make this many changes to something, you know, you, I'm gonna have to give you feedback on how it's gonna turn out in the end, right? So, yeah. Um, 
so I, I would say just just in terms like you know kind of to to repeat one more time I, I just really feel I mean I mean I think I next time I'm gonna probably make it um, a request that people send me transposed scores unless they a don't know how to do it or B have something completely set up and they can't get back in there and fix it right just because it's easier for me to read like for instance here I don't know if this is intended to be at pitch right because I've, I'm seeing so many things that are in the wrong register like this um, contra bassoon and double bass scored an octave lower than it should be so I'm not really sure if this bass clarinet is intended to be at those pitches or an octave lower right I because you know, it's, it's actually pretty high scoring for a you know for a characteristic bass clarinet part um, I used to not ask my I used to not ask my entrants to uh, to supply a mock-up but they sent them anyways and then I would get into cases where I really did need to know what they intended and this would be one you know to really make sure whether or not that was a lower tone or not but just because of the complexity of the scoring right in here it's hard for me to tell so um, yeah so like usually I would just I just look at something and I hear it in my head but I, I want to know what the mock-up is telling you that you know what, what is it saying to you about the notation that you are practicing right so so anyways I just would say like in this case it is you need to adjust like if you're having a problem thinking about things at octave transpositions then you need to get over that right if the if the contra bassoon part and the double bass part were at pitch because you have some problems reading that just get over those problems and go back to standard transpositions for standard octave transpositions for any instrument that transposes at the octave you should just get used to it okay so if that if that wasn't the reason for the issue uh, and then you forgot to bring these back up to the regular octave then you know get past that learn to adjust to it and then like maybe send me a transpose score next time okay but like really cool score just enjoyed this so much i mean it's it's you know it's it's really obvious you're you've got you know you're just really thinking about orchestration in a different way and you are um you know you're you're just really trying out a bunch of different ideas and and you know usually really good ones um but yeah you know like maybe take some of those insights there are some other entries today for the uh, dotted semi brev level I think they could really you know they could use some feedback from you I know that they're probably going to give you some feedback too on your score if there's anything you can say even just like some you know some praise you know just like if somebody did something that you really enjoyed just let them know please please that would really be a great thing for me to see more people commenting on each other's scores very very important for these challenges um, about a week ago I was feeling very, you know, a bit frustrated because I had, you know, I'd released about 24 to 32 evaluations and, and there was just not a word on any of them or hardly a word except for just like one or two people. So, yeah, so just commenting is really important. I hope that you are able to look at the, some of the other scores, especially at this dotted semi brev level that I'm uploading to the Patreon feed today and uh, to YouTube in general and you can add some comments it would be really really great so with that i will move on to the next score now but just thank you so much for supporting the channel it means a lot and it's great to have another score from you